Hi crafters, it's Kathy from Scrap and Bean coming to you with another Technique Tuesday and today I'm going to work with some different styles of stencils. So I'll start by showing you, I mean this is the common typical type of stencil, a whole bunch of different designs where you use pieces of it or all of it and create designs in your background. But today I'm going to show you some different styles of stencils. So this one you basically have your whole image on one stencil, which you could also use just pieces of it to create backgrounds, but you can use the whole thing for your project as well. And then we'll try doing a project with this 3D stencils as well. So a little bit different style than um, what you might be familiar with. So I'm going to start with just a piece of cardstock I have here and some pixie spray on my I like putting this on my stencils, especially when I'm going to use spray through the stencil because it sprays will really run through to the back of your stencil and you don't get a very good image lots of times. And I'm going to use some Dina Wakely gloss sprays, which do need to be shaken up really well. And I just grabbed some they kind of look like a scary combination together these colors but let's see what happens so this is going to be my background color and I don't want to put it on too thick because if it gets really thick and juicy there is that chance that it's going to run underneath my stencil uh, the other thing with what could I do maybe I just don't want to wait a long time since we're on camera and watching paint dry. It's very boring. Uh, let's try what would happen. I'll we'll just experiment if we took a piece of paper. Because there's so much paint sitting on top of my stencil, I'm just going to experiment with picking some of that up. I'm going to try the brayer on there and see if that gives me another image. Okay, should have brayered a little bit better, but you could, you, I could work with that. Um, and maybe just one more light spray to make sure that we're getting that background good and solid. So we're actually going to use these paints as a resist to themselves. So these Dina Wakely, her gloss sprays, do act as a resist for itself. Now normally I wouldn't pat this up, I would just allow it to air dry. But to save a few moments of time, and there we have our image. Now I do have a little bit of paint snuck underneath there, so it's not a real clear image, but you'll get the idea anyways. And then we'll go with this kind of a scary combination color, but why not, eh? Ooh, yeah, that's pretty wild. Okay, and there it looks like a hot mess, but when we wipe it because it acts like a resist see where the other color is coming through. So there's one way that you can use this stencil is just do two alternating colors maybe choose some colors that look better together and there you got your uh, one way to use that stencil. So here is somewhere I have Here's one I did with some other colors. So this is the same stencil. And I wanted to highlight that dragonfly, so I just put some stickles on it, added a greeting, put it on the base, and there's a nice 6x6 six six card. Or you could, you know, what a quick journal page there as well. So let's move on to this 3D. I can't even get these anymore. So we do have several in the store of different, like a variety of designs of these 3D ones. Um, but if this interests you, you don't want to wait too long on that one just because I can't get those anymore. 
And these, we've got them in nice, beautiful roses. I think there's some daisies. Um, I'll see what I can do for adding that onto the tape because there's some neat designs in that. So what this means by 3D is you get three layers and actually you also get a mask. So you get four layers. So, um, and they're numbered. So here's your layer number one, which is your outline. You get these, what can be used as a mask. So the pieces that were cut out of these. Then there's your next layer, which is labeled for you, layer number two, and there's your layer number three, which makes it 3D. So I was going to use on here today. Um, we'll just do we'll just do one of these medium butterflies. So we're going to start with layer number one, and I'm going to use some. I'm going to use some paint for this. So this I just happen to be using um, chalk paint in terracotta color only because that's what I have and I love chalk paints. I love the fresco finished chalk paints. I'm going to use a stencil brush. And just put on a little bit of the paint. I want it fairly dry so I'm not getting my paint brush wet or anything. And I'm just going to stencil on this layer one. And I should have had some more paint out here. Sometimes stenciling with paint takes a little bit of practice so that you're getting the paint thick enough to go on, but not so thick or runny that it's going to go underneath your stencil. So there's our first layer. And I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel here and get off most of my paint. off my brush and for the next layer now I want to dry it in between it dries pretty quick but we'll just make sure it's totally dry for my next color let's try some of this smoked paprika And we want layer number two. So you just line this up over top of what you've already painted and that'll put your next layer of pattern right on top of your butterfly. And I'm using a stencil brush. It's basically some stiff kind of brush there. So if you don't have a stencil brush, you could even just use an old wrecked paintbrush that's kind of gone stiff on you. That, that tends to work. So there's our second layer. And make sure that's good and dry. And I see that I did shift my stencil a little bit. So it's not perfect, but that's okay. And then let's go with some red. Uh, we'll maybe give us contrast. Or actually, I often for this third layer use black so that you get a nice black outline. But we'll try something different. Now we want number three. And we're going to put this right over top. I don't want my stencil sitting in my paint, but we'll line this up, just kind of eyeball it there of where that should be. And then put our third color through the stencil. Doesn't take very much paint. And there's our third color. So now we end up with three different colors on our one butterfly here.
and what I would even do with this is cut it out cut it out and use that onto a project especially if you've done like me and got some fingerprints or whatever I did there put some paint around the outside of it and then you also have oh I should have showed you actually maybe I'll do that without cutting this out here's how you can use your mask on this. We'll pixie spray that as well. Put it down onto here. And what do I have handy that I could spray on there? Blue. I don't know. Let's just go with some distress, distress spray. So because I have a mask, you can also do background. And there you go. So that's one way to use it. And now you can take in your traditional stencils and just liven that up a little bit. Good way to cover up marks too, like over here where I got a little bit of red paint. Just cover it up. And then just continue that until you've made the background that you want. So, see how much cleanup I can get away with here. And here I wanted to show you some finished, uh, here's some butterflies. Now these I did with using Distress ink pads, just using an ink applicator and put them on there. I happen to use Distress Oxide pads, but you could use the regular ones. Here's one where I've done the bigger butterfly. Here's one where I've done the butterfly onto pattern paper, this is on book paper, and made this into a bookmark with a little piece to hang out of your bookmark. And you can always continue to embellish things on top of these as well. So here I have my Wink of Stella in the clear, which just adds some nice glitter. So you could put your stencil back down and just glitter through parts of the design so it shows up. Or you could just glitter a whole area, or you can do the entire butterfly. Now I think on this one, I would do the whole butterfly, so it's nice and sparkly. But on film, while you're watching here, I'll just do one, one wing. So that it doesn't take quite so long, just so you can see what it's looked like to have a little bit of sparkle on there. So we'll see if that shows up on camera, where this wing hopefully has some sparkle and the other one doesn't have it yet. I don't know if that'll show up, but when you stop in the store, you can always take a look and see what that looks like. Um, and then I can also add some Nuvo drops and just give this guy a little body back. So I'm not gonna add Nuvo drops on this part because this is the part that's gonna go inside my book and I want it to be nice and flat. But this will hang out of my book and so I feel like I can add some dimension onto there. Just add some little pearl drops. And the challenge I have with pearls is that I once I start making them, I have a hard time stopping because they're just fun. And easy so what if I just add a couple more pearls we'll just add some little pearls on the bottom and then I just better stop because I could go crazy with those so there you have it of course I need to have that dry but there's a bookmark with it there's our card Here's where I've done um, a larger one with Distress ink pads. 
in other colors. So I hope you explore that and try out these 3D. We've got some beautiful roses in these that would be a really nice design. And also try out some of these type of stencils where you get the whole image on one stencil. And there you go for Try It Tuesday.